As they always say, life is way too short to drive boring vehicles. And when it comes to the Land Rover Defender, it's anything but dull. For many years, it's been looked to as being a great off-road worthy vehicle, one that can get you through deep snow, mud, or in other parts of the world on safaris or whatever other elements you'll be encountering on an off-road adventure. But this new generation that has been out for a few years or so is taking on a different persona, especially if you go with the V8. And that is right, under the hood of this Defender is that supercharged V8 that I'm so looking forward to experiencing today. But we're gonna go over everything about this SUV. We're gonna check out the features that it comes with, the interior quality, but also see if it's a great alternative to a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, or a Porsche Cayenne, or even a BMW X5M. And we're also gonna see why, if you are looking at buying a rugged SUV that's also very classy, upscale and luxurious at around $120,000, then maybe taking a look at the Land Rover Defender with the V8 might be a great decision. Now, before we get in this video, I want to give a huge shout and thank you to Jaguar Land Rover Peabody in Peabody, Massachusetts for allowing me to this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Jaguar and Land Rover inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. Whether it's a fad or a trend that's here to stay, the off-road SUV segment has become one of the fastest growing markets in the automotive world. And despite Land Rover always being there to entice high-end shoppers, it's only been recently, with the return of the Defender nameplate, where this brand has once again attracted outdoor lifestyle-focused consumers. The argument could be made that this SUV was the missing piece of the current lineup, despite Land Rover offering the LR3 and LR4 in the past. But it's the Defender's proud lineage and history that's offset some of the newer arrivals to this segment but also its flexibility of offering a Tudor model or Thero variant with the 130 is something that can't be overlooked. Starting off with pricing, the Land Rover Defender 110 with the V8 comes in at just over $110,000, slotting just beneath the Carpathian edition in the lineup. What's made the Defender intriguing and an alternative to so many traditional off-roaders is the fact that you have a number of different powertrains to choose from, and better yet, the price range covers a wide swath of segments and markets where buyers can choose a model just below 60 grand and work their way up to a well-equipped example that suits their lifestyle. With the standard air suspension for this Defender, you can easily tackle the elements, but also there's the benefits of having an adaptive suspension that translates to on-road trips as this SUV isn't the most harsh to drive when encountering imperfections on the roadways. When it pertains to the design of the Defender, this generation is a completely different entity compared to its predecessors. And while it retains the square and muscular road presence that's made this nameplate so iconic, there's a subtle sense that this SUV is also meant to appeal to customers who've traditionally liked rugged aesthetics, but may not use their Defender for off-road excursions. Because this generation is built on the Jaguar Land Rover D7 platform, this SUV is also providing luxury in a somewhat retro package, which is why it's fared very well in this market since its arrival. The full LED headlights with the signature daytime running lights and the fog lights mounted below adds a modern look. And with the extended black exterior package, this Defender has a low profile but sinister demeanor that is sure to draw attention. Moving over to the side profile, this model is sitting on the optional 22 inch gloss black wheels wrapped in all season tires. But for the avid adventure, the 20s with the off-road tires will be the logical choice. Obviously for an SUV designated as being rugged, the Defender will not be plush like the Range Rover autobiography but it's not truck-like as we see with the G-Wagon, so it will be a smooth transition for someone upgrading from a crossover. You'll have folding side mirrors with turn signal indicators to go along blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, this is where the Defender's timeless design 
will strike up some nostalgia. But as with any SUV that has an off-road heritage, it's here where there's no mistaking it for a crossover pretending to be durable and capable. The one difference that sets this Defender apart is the quad exhaust outlets. And that's the indicator that we believe brings a different persona than models with the four and six cylinder engines. As you can't look at this Defender as being strictly one dimensional, but rather an SUV that'll be just as impressive in a straight line as it performs off road. Under the hood, we have the five liter supercharged V8 engine producing 518 horsepower and 461 pound-feet of torque, and it's paired with an eight-speed automatic transmission. In an era where these larger powertrains are being phased out, it's refreshing to see Land Rover offer an SUV that's not burly and obscenely oversized. While the Defender isn't a small vehicle, it's still maneuverable even when traveling down thinner streets or when approaching sharp corners, bringing some much-needed agility. With a 0-60 to 60 time of around 5 seconds, the fun never seems to end. And whether it's off-road or on pavement, the Defender quickly adapts the environment you place it in. The 8-speed automatic also provides smooth gear shifts, even when placed in dynamic mode. As you'd expect, all-wheel drive does come standard for models with the V8. And when it comes to fuel economy, you're looking at right around 14 miles per gallon in the city and 19 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, you're greeted by power adjustable, heated, and ventilated Windsor leather seats for both the driver and passenger, which will likely be a better choice over the suede cloth upholstery if you prefer premium comfort. However, the heated suede cloth steering wheel is a really nice touch that complements the driving environment quite well. In front of you, there will be a full digital gauge cluster which is customizable, where you can display the navigation map and you can also change the layout to a more traditional look if you so desire. The head-up display is very easy to read and can be adjusted to be at eye level so you won't have to look down at the speedometer and instead keep your eyes on the road. Then moving over to the infotainment system, you'll have the larger 11.4-inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility to go along with onboard navigation and the Meridian sound system. Much like we've seen across the Jaguar Land Rover family of vehicles, this head unit is very tablet-like, making it almost second nature to use the minute you step inside and start interacting with the interior. From this screen, you can monitor off-road and performance statistics, access climb control settings, and if you forgot how large the Defender is, there's even a menu that shows you its dimensions. Most of the learning curve will come from the controls found beneath the screen, as the dials are honed to a number of functions besides setting the interior temperature. They control the heated and ventilated seats, fan speed, and also helps you select which drive mode you want to be in. Helping with the visibility when parking the Defender, you'll have a variety of camera angles to choose from to ensure you don't accidentally bump into anything when navigating your way through tight spots or when backing up. Making our way towards the center console, there will be a wireless phone charging pad, but possibly one of the coolest features we've come across is the cooled center storage compartment to keep drinks at desired temperature. And while not appearing to be sizable on camera, you could certainly fit bottled water in this cubby. Trendy but becoming common is the storage space beneath the center console for an additional phone or wallet. Then to round out the front seating area, above, will be a power moonroof to let in a lot of natural light to the interior. Now moving on to the second row, we're gonna start off on the passenger side. And this seat has been adjusted all the way back and is somewhat on a recline. And I have a lot of legroom to work with here. Now that's one thing I really like about the Defender is that it's certainly family friendly. It's not just a vehicle that you can take off road, go on longer road trips, or even flex on a city street. This is a great all around daily driver and also a vehicle that I think you have a blast owning, especially if you do have a family. Now, of course, 
I'm not the tallest person out there. I'm around 5'5". Five five. However, you still have a lot of room here if you are somewhere on the height of 5'8 or 5'9". So if you have taller passengers up front, you can sit back here pretty comfortably. Also, of course, with the higher roof line, you have no problems and no issues if you are someone who is taller because you won't be hitting your head on the headliner at all, even with the massive panoramic moonroof. Also, shoulder room isn't that bad at all, but we're going to find out if you can't fit a third person back here. Now, moving on to the center seat, there are some good placements for your feet also if you need to. You just slide your feet in a bit more that way both passengers on the outboard seats can be a bit more comfortable. Now, I have plenty of shoulder room here, so I think you could definitely have three average size adults sit back here on a longer drive. So if you are going on that off-road trip and you wanna have your friends tag along with you, you can definitely do that for sure. Then on the driver's side, the seat is adjusted a bit more further up to someone around my height of 5'5", and I have plenty of legroom, so I can just sit back, relax, and enjoy the driving experience. But also, with the Windsor Leather upholstery, you're going to be very comfortable back here, especially on those longer drives. Also back here, you have two rear air vents mounted on the center console, heated outboard seats, climb control, and rounding out the second row seating area, you do get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back with the Defender, you will have the traditional tailgate. And inside, behind the second row seats, you're looking at right around 34 cubic feet of room, which is on par with other vehicles in this price range and for SUVs of this size. Also, since you have a higher roof line and this cargo area being nice and wide, you can have no problem fitting all your equipment with you if you are going off-road or maybe you're going on a road trip with the family. I was able to fit all my camera gear today, so that's two bags of camera gear, a gimbal box, and a tripod. Probably could have stacked on a tent or other outdoor equipment if I was going off-road with this vehicle today. One feature I really like as a shorter person is the fact that you can lower the rear suspension so that way you can slide all your items back here, no problems. So you don't need to lift up and throw your gear inside. I really like that and a lot of other SUVs in this price range offer similar features like that. Then with the second row seats folded, you're going to have right around 79 cubic feet, once again, being very much on par with other SUVs in this market. So if you are looking for something a bit more adventurous, a bit more practical, and just an all-around great SUV, definitely take a look at the Defender. Then, of course, you will have a rear-mounted spare tire, so if you do encounter a flat on your road trips or travels, you can fix that and be back on the road. And finally, for the moment we've all been waiting for, Let's take out the V8 Defender and see how it performs. Okay, so the V8 is warmed up. I have the Defender in dynamic mode. Let's see how this vehicle performs, how it handles, how it drives, how it compares to other premium luxury SUVs in this market, and also see if it's a great alternative and a more affordable alternative to a Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. Right off the bat with the V8, this is a completely different beast than the four-cylinder Defender I'd reviewed about a year and a half ago. Personally, I think with the V8, you're gonna be more inclined to just drive this vehicle on the pavement rather than go off-road. With the six cylinder and the four cylinder, you're most likely gonna be going off-road as it will be a better alternative and a more upscale alternative to a Jeep Wrangler and also the Ford Bronco. Especially when you take a look at the Bronco prices these days, even though they have come down a bit, you're probably gonna feel more apt to go in the Land Rover direc direction, especially with that price point. But since we do have the V8 and this model is right around $120,000, I feel as though this is gonna be more of a status symbol, but also a fun daily driver that you're going to enjoy every single minute you are behind the wheel. I gotta be honest, I really like the ultra suede steering wheel. Feels really nice in the hands, very upscale and also premium quality. Now, since we are starting off this review on some tight roads, might as well get into the vision you have here, but also the maneuverability of this vehicle because it is quite wide and it is rather long. Now. 
Up front, I have a nice panoramic view. A-pillars are somewhat aggressive, so keep that in mind when you are approaching an intersection. I don't think you'll need to worry about blind spots though. Then take a look at your side mirrors. They are placed in a good spot. Also, they are very aggressive and decently sized, so I can see what's behind me. And then looking out back, of course, we do have the rear mounted spare tire and the headrest, and that will create a bit of a visibility issue if you are looking out back. But overall though, because you do sit pretty high up, in this vehicle, you get a nice commanding feel and presence over the roadways. Also, the seating position is perfect in this vehicle. Now, the seats are not aggressively bolstered, but they do provide a lot of support and cushioning, especially since they are Windsor leather. Also, of course, you do have a head-up display, which you might be able to see from one of my GoPros. It's very clear and easy to read. Also, of course, you do have that traffic sign recognition, so that way, if you are getting a bit frisky behind the wheel, you can keep yourself in check and not get yourself into any trouble. So as we approach some of the corners on this back road, let's see how the Defender handles them. Now steering is rather light, typical for a rugged SUV like this. Very similar to even a G-Wagon, although I think the G-Wagon feels more like a truck. That's one thing I do want to point out here about this vehicle is that, yes, it does have a durable and truck-like on-road demeanor, but one thing to keep in mind here is that the Defender is built on Jaguar Land Rover's D7 platform, an iteration of that platform, which underpins the F-Pace and also the XE. So this isn't a body on frame chassis. It's not gonna feel like the G-Wagon. It's not gonna feel like the Cadillac Escalade or even the Infiniti QX80. This is a nice mix and a blend of what you would experience with the BMW X5M and also Audi SQ7, while also still having that off-road capability that those two SUVs are just not going to give you. <laughs> Zero to 60 times come in just over five seconds, which is unbelievable for an SUV of this size. Now the eight-speed automatic transmission, the gear shifts are so smooth and crisp, and it just gives you that aggressive and dynamic feel that you're looking for in an SUV with this powertrain. Also, I love the grunt and the muscle of that V8. Really gives this SUV a lot of character, especially at around $120,000. That's one of the reasons why I feel that if you are looking at buying a Land Rover, you gotta go with the V8. Now, of course, if you are on somewhat of a stricter budget, I'm gonna use that term very lightly because starting prices come in at around $54,000, $55,000 for the four cylinder. It might be a bit higher than that. So it's not gonna be the most affordable vehicle out there. But if you do have the budget for a vehicle at around $120,000, don't skimp out, go with the V8 rather than the six cylinder. Now, I do think though that with the six cylinder, you're probably gonna feel more apt to maybe be a bit more adventurous, but with the V8, this is really going to be a different style, a different persona, a different personality. For one, you have the nice sounding exhaust, which does get your heart racing, but also when you take a look at the design of this vehicle, it is a departure from the Defenders of old. It's not necessarily one that you look at and you say, all right, I am gonna go on an outdoor adventure. I'm gonna go on a safari. This is more like a vehicle that's maybe a more affordable alternative to the Range Rover line, where if you really can't go all out for an autobiography, go with the Defender because you're still gonna have the nice interior materials, gonna get the technology, full digital gauge cluster, nice 11 inch touchscreen, but you're not spending $160,000. Also another thing too is that this vehicle has such a presence on the roadways, you're drawing so much attention to yourself, which is why I think that if you are a high profile person, you might like this vehicle because one, it still gives you that appearance of being upscale, wealthy, but also in this particular spec being all blacked out, it also has more of a lower profile look that I think is really cool, but also really gives this vehicle a very striking personality. It's gonna be nice and quiet as I get on the highway here. I don't wanna draw unwanted attention. Now at highway speeds at around 60 miles per hour, 
The interior is very well insulated, which is a bit of a surprise to me because one, we have 22 inch wheels on this model. Now you can go with 20s with the all-terrain tires, which that would be more suitable if you are gonna be taking this vehicle off-road. But again, I think with the V8, you're gonna stick with the all seasons. But because of the shape of this SUV, I was expecting a bit more wind noise. And especially since today we do have a lot of wind, I was expecting more of that entering the cabin. And that just isn't the case. In fact, at highway speeds, this vehicle feels very composed on the roadways. That is one of the reasons why a lot of people do say that it does have somewhat of a car-like demeanor on the highway. And as I said before, it is built on the D7 platform, which underpins a lot of Jaguar Land Rover products. So of course, it's not going to feel like you're driving a pickup truck, but does feel very secure on the roadways. You don't really need to put a lot of input in the steering at all. It doesn't sway at all. It's pretty quiet. Even when you're just coasting, when you're just tapping on that throttle, the V8 does quiet down. And in dynamic mode, I think you can definitely drive in this particular mode all day. You can just hear that supercharger wind up. <laughs> it's so nice. Now getting back to the interior dimensions of this SUV, you have a lot of shoulder room to work with. But one thing I do like though is that it's very maneuverable. On smaller roads or even when you are getting on the highway, it does feel very agile and very maneuverable. So it can get out of its own way even for a heavy vehicle like the Defender. So if you are looking to upsize to a vehicle like the Defender, you want something a bit bigger, but also one that has that off-road capability, feels durable and rugged, but also feels at home on the roadways, whether it is on the highway or in the suburbs, you're gonna love what the Defender is offering because it does feel very well-rounded. You can drive this vehicle around on your weekday commutes, especially with the air suspension. As you go over the bumps and imperfections in the road seamlessly, you barely feel them at all, which is why the Defender's gonna be suitable if you do have a family. Also, you can take this into town, park it on the city streets, go to the shops, you also have the interior spacing where if you want to do some retail therapy, you can do that. You can buy everything to your heart's desire. And it's just a vehicle I think is perfect for a lot of consumers of all ages. So all in all, after this test drive, I feel the Land Rover Defender is a great vehicle for somebody who doesn't want the driving experience that you'll receive with a Wrangler or Ford Bronco. But you also don't necessarily want to have a one-dimensional SUV like a BMW X5M or a Porsche Cayenne GTS or Turbo, which can't go off-road, which isn't gonna have those rugged attributes that you might be looking for, where on those rare occasions, if you are going up to the mountains to ski and snowboard, you're gonna feel more inclined to take on that deeper snow. But also, if you are somebody that really does wanna go on those off-road adventures and get this vehicle muddy and dirty, the Defender has that design that I think really suits getting that mud on the paint. Whereas Porsche Cayenne and the BMW X5M, most likely not. So the Defender, in my mind, it's that nice middle of the road choice. It's not gonna have that pickup truck-like characteristic like you see with the Cadillac Escalade and the Infiniti QX80, but it's also not gonna be soft and only purpose-built for the on-road experience like you're gonna see from other European competitors. So to quickly wrap up this review and after spending some time with the Land Rover Defender, I've come to the conclusion that this vehicle really is the sweet spot in the Land Rover lineup. You can go with the four-cylinder, the six-cylinder, or the V8. You can go off-road with this SUV, or it can solely be used for on-road driving. I think that's mostly what the V8 is gonna be used for. It's a great alternative to the BMW X5M, Porsche Cayenne, or even the Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon. But you still have that capability when you wanna go off-road or take on some deeper snow. I also feel that with the V8, this SUV has far more character than the four-cylinder. Now, of course, you are paying a premium around $115,000 $120,000, but I think it's totally worth it, especially in its segment. You have plenty of practicality, a lot of interior space, but also a good amount of technology as well. But ultimately, it comes back to the driving experience with the V8 as it adds so much 
to this SUV more so than the six cylinder and the four cylinder that I'd reviewed a year and a half ago. And that's why I feel that if you are in the budget or in the market for a vehicle at around $120,000, definitely take a look at the Defender V8. I think it's gonna be a very fun vehicle for you. So guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Boston Auto Blog, so you can see what I'm up to and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.